and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Adam Jordan. Hello. Tom Webster. Howdy. And myself, Eric Fine. How are you two doing this fine week? I am doing pretty good, actually. Not too bad. How about you, Tom? You've been um, holding up pretty well? Yeah, I actually got a lot of video gaming done this week. Uh, Way more than I thought I would get done. Uh, Last week was kind of a fluke because I played everything, and I played (laughs) almost the same amount this week. Nice. You're killing it. You're you're picking up my slack because I Uh, haven't been hardly playing at all. So so how is that thumb? The thumb thumb is... Not completely. It's still pretty jacked up, but I if I've I've been wearing a like thumb brace that keeps me from bending it, which is when it hurts the most. So um I can play games now with the brace on without pain. So that's good. Do you have yeah. the brace on currently? I do not. I, I've been trying not to oh. wear it all day because it it makes my hands sweaty after a while and it kinda compresses my hand a bit so i don't want that to be happening all the time so i don't have it on now no no whatever so but oh i'm so happy i can play games again i was getting really antsy i was getting so antsy I played some rocket league tonight that was great um it was even worse because i had bought a 144 hertz monitor my first one and it got here oh what day did it get here it got here like a couple days after I entered my thumb. So <laughs> that was uh that was not fun. I was so ready to play and I couldn't. <laughs> it's kind of like sucks. a cock tease. Yeah. It's like you have this brand new beautiful monitor, but you can't play. Yeah. Actually getting that monitor up. was a pain. So I had um I wanted to get a cheap one because uh, you know financial responsibility and i didn't really i don't really need top of the line stuff anyway so i was looking at this acer model it was 150 bucks it was 144 hertz uh free sync amd free sync you know this was like bang for your buck city so it was on micro center and i was like oh okay perfect so i went to order it uh, the order page wouldn't go through. I refreshed the page, out of stock. Okay, oh. whatever. So um, I waited a day, still out of stock. So I went to Amazon, and there was a model. It's the same. It's basically the same monitor, same specs, except it was last year's model, and it has a better stand. So it's got a really nice adjustable stand. And I was like, and it was twenty dollars more. So I thought, okay, one hundred and seventy bucks. That's still pretty good. I'll go ahead and order that. So I ordered it on Amazon, uh, back ordered for a month oh, at the time oh. of ordering. So I was of like, course. Oh, God. So, so I left the order in. I figured I'd left that order in. I'll check Micro Center again in a week. You know, if it gets in stock in Micro Center, I can just drive to Micro Center and then cancel my Amazon order. So that happened. Uh, probably three or four days later, check Micro Center. Ooh, it's in stock at the one location. So I go to order it. The order thing didn't go through. I refreshed the page. The price jumps from $150 to $200. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, that's In beautiful. stock, $200. I'm like, oh, God, no, you're killing me. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to pay, you know, I guess it would be $30 more. So to I decided to wait. Yeah, I decided to wait it out. So hey, finally, got finally got here. Yeah, I got the That's better stand, brutal. and after in be- in between when I ordered it on Amazon and when it actually shipped, the price jumped to like two hundred and thirty five. So, luckily, I had ordered it before and not just waited to order it. So, <laughs> I kind of so you got seventy five dollars cheaper and a better yeah. stand. Yeah, I'd say you made out. So sometimes, yeah, for sure. It's you the had to reorder uh, X- a few XF- times. Yeah, it's the Acer XF two forty H. So. It's it's good. I love it. Um, out of the box, the colors were terrible, terrible colors out of the box. Um, it's a TN panel, which isn't uh, supposedly it's not ideal. So I was kind of worried about getting it, but then I looked up my 
monitor I was using before was already a TN panel. So like my dumb <laughs> eyes wouldn't know the difference anyway. So um, there was a really good Reddit post with some color color calibration configuration stuff. So I, I put that in and it looks way better. It looks really good. I'm going to have to check that out because I, I just got a new monitor, but yeah. I mean, after hearing the, the story of, of the magical 144 yeah. hertz. Have you guys ever played on one at all? No. No. It feels like, uh, remember the first time you ever saw 60 frame per second video? It, it yes, feels sir. like that. It kind of feels like uh, playing a game with V-Sync on, but there's no input lag from the V-Sync. Hmm. Just that so really buttery, smooth, yeah. <laughs> Even when you're not playing games, you can notice it, like with the mouse movement or when you're moving windows around, stuff like that. It's just nice. I think it would freak me yeah. out. The, the first time I saw <laughs> a, like a, a high refresh rate TV, there was yeah. like a football game on or something in the camera pan. And it was almost it, surreal, it, wasn't it? Yeah, and it, it sort of like, because it was, it was one of these like 90-inch crazy things <laughs> that sell for $20,000. Right. And, you know, I'm walking past it and looking at the sports ball and the camera pans. And I literally, it, it gives me some slight vertigo. I was like, whoa, ho, the world is shifting in front of me. <laughs> it was odd. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to do uh, demos at Sam's Club. And when I was doing that was right when um, Avatar was coming out. So you have all these high refresh rate TVs out there and this just looks like you said, it's surreal. The people look detached from the background because the way it's panning, you're just not used to being able to separate the person from the background like that. Yeah. Yeah. The the soap opera effect too, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. So So, yeah, that was basically all my gaming. Say, Tom, you had uh, quite a list. Um, How about you uh, go through a little bit what you've been doing? Okay. I've I've gone through a lot, so I'm going to try to kill as many of these as possible. Um, Okay. On the Vive, because I decided I'm going to Vive the hell out of this week, uh, which happened for half the week um, because of this game. So I was playing some Hollow Ball, which is great. I love Hollow Ball. Um, But it's a very very intense running around game. Think 3D Pong, and you've got your your two paddles in your hand. And you run around and smack stuff and hit it, bounce it off walls. And they've got a nice zen mode, which gives you some, you can put on some surreal, you know, quiet tunes and slowly bat a ball back and forth. But that's not cool. So I went fully hardcore uh, and ended up pulling a muscle. And I, I had to stop vibing a couple days ago because... I'm having trouble walking. Thanks, Valve. <laughs> um, so, Hollow Ball is good. Um, I was never that big on it. I thought it was okay, but, but it was another one of those that felt like a tech demo to me. I was like, hey, you hit this ball yeah. on the wall, the computer's going to hit it back. Now go. It is. It absolutely is a tech demo, but I feel the same way about Hollow Ball, which, I mean, do you remember how much that was when it came out? Was it five bucks i think it was like 10 or 10 i think it not more than 10 10's definitely the ceiling but i mean for that much i basically got the vr equivalent of wii tennis i'm okay with that i'm very okay with that um and you know any vr game that can give you bodily injury has got to be a good one um so other than that that's one way to look at it or a very very bad one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> or a very bad one you know either way um so i did play castlevania circle of moon um which is a classic the first castlevania game on the game boy advance it's one of the metroidvania style castlevania games it's good not a whole lot to say about it play it if you haven't it is a little rough around the edges um but i want to talk about the witcher I put in only two to three hours of the original Witcher game this week um, because it made me mad. It just, it, I was fed up. So did you guys ever play WoW back in the day? Or, or really no. any MMO? This could apply to any MMO. Nah, yeah, I put, like I said, a lot of RuneScape. So I definitely have the MMO. <laughs> RuneScape's about my only MMO 
Experience. You guys, you guys understand the futility of the fetch quest, then, right? Yeah. Oh God, yeah. yes. So, okay, I'm playing the Witcher, and I'm doing these side quests because I want to finish the side quests so I can, you know, meet all the side characters and get all the exposition and you know go through an RPG the way I'm I would like to, you know, role playing as Geralt the Witcher. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going through this quest and. It starts with, hey, so-and-so wants, you know, five rat heads or something stupid. So I'm like, all right, cool. Go to the woods, smack a few rats around and grab the stuff, give it to the dude. He's like, oh, cool, thanks. But actually, you need to take this information to Bob the Builder, who's like 15 minutes this way. I'm like, okay, cool. Sup, Bob? And Bob's like, oh, no, not this information. Actually, Fred, the foreman, needs this information. I'm like, oh, Jesus fucking <laughs> Christ. And it goes through, I'm not even shitting you, like four people for the same quest, but it's not like four people standing next to each other. These people are 10 minutes away apiece. Once I had to go to an island, which is like a 20 minute walk, um, back to the mainland, back to the island, back to the mainland. What the fuck? I mean, granted, so. granted, The Witcher is an old game. It's an old style RPG. And maybe, maybe in a parallel universe back in that time period, fetch quests weren't so frowned upon, but it felt so antiquated. I didn't feel like playing a single player MMO, which is exactly what The Witcher feels like to play. With so or without the fetch could quest. You- could you go back and just kill the guy who gave you the wrong information to at least get that satisfaction? Um, probably, probably. I, don't know. I would have went back try. to each one of them and put a sword <laughs> through the face of everyone who told me the wrong fucking person. I know I wouldn't have done shit, but damn it, it'd make me feel better. So there's the Witcher. As I play it, it does feel more and more like a single player MMO, and that's as much good and as much bad as I can say about it. Uh, the combat is nothing to write home about. It's you know you, you click at the appropriate time, but it doesn't matter where you click. Um, and it's it's basically turn based. Uh, yeah. It's not entirely turn based, but it's basically turn based. <laughs> The quests aren't anything to write home about, the side quest at least. Um, the characters are very interesting. The world is very interesting. The story is very interesting. And that's really why I'm playing it. Think if your MMO had a really nice story behind it. That's what the original Witcher is. Mm-hmm. So I will no finish MMO it. ever. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I will finish it. It's on my list. I'm going through all of the Witcher games. So maybe in a year or two, I'll be talking about The Witcher 3. <laughs> But we'll yeah. see. It's worth mentioning too for the people who haven't played the Witcher series that the first game is pretty agreed upon to be very rough around the edges. Yeah. And uh pretty much they've improved with every release from what I've read. Uh Witcher three has got insanely good reviews. It it got game of the year and then one of the DLCs got game of the year, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I really wanted to jump into The Witcher 2 or 3, but I believe I've said this on the show before. When you get into The Witcher 2, it's like, oh yeah, you played through one before. You know what all this stuff does. <laughs> and they just shower you with items and spells and yeah. backstory and characters. I'm like, oh, remember this guy? You should because it's really important to your upcoming quest. And I'm like, I don't know what's going yeah. on. And then I get my ass kicked. So Isn't, isn't The Witcher series, uh, isn't there books too? Yes, yes, the, the entire world really? is kind of made based on the together. books. Okay. That could be yeah. cool. I mean, when, when you I, sign up for The Witcher, you sign up for an entire universe of content. Right, yeah. I really tend to be the guy who doesn't give two shits about story, but every once in a while when there is something that does grab me, I love it when there's a lot of lore around the game outside of what yeah. you played. Halo, yeah, like Halo. The first Halo. Halo. Oh my god. <laughs> Halo has a lot of that kind of lore going on to it. I absolutely love it. That's definitely I bought my the Halo books. Thing. I read all of the Halo books. I read them in like two days. They're so good. And then they had to come out with Halo 2. And then there's, you know, games like Mario that has some really rich lore to it, you know. You got <laughs> yeah. that damn kidnapping. Yep. Though I, yeah, I, say I did hear, 
did hear a really cool, interesting theory about that, though. That after he defeated Bowser the first time, because it's been widely acknowledged, even by Miyamoto, that three is a screenplay. Yes. Um, but that after defeating Bowser, Mario started to get very dark and evil. And in fact, in like Donkey Kong Jr., Mario's a bad person who has Donkey Kong in a cage, and Donkey Kong Jr. is trying to free his dad from Mario. So, I mean, there is this dark side that kind of possibly exists for Mario to the point where um, he eventually turns into Wario. He progresses down evil to turn into Wario, and the baby Mario is actually the Mario that's in the new Super Mario Brothers with Luigi to try to take down Wario. Did you just yes. red pill Mario? You just red pilled Mario. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I did not. That was Idle Thumbs 110% because they were talking about that for the last three fucking weeks, and I love this concept. People need to run with this goddamn thing and make it happen. This is ridiculous. I love how hard people try to make something deeper out of something that's probably not very deep. (laughs) Not that it's not interesting. It's absolutely interesting. Nintendo did say that the whole Mario thing, supposedly like with lore, it's really Mm -hmm. dark and there was a lot of nasty things that happened. But being Nintendo, none of the games fucking show it because, you know, you got Mario Sunshine. Until Nintendo goes under, they get bought by EA, and then they have a gritty Mario reboot. Bomberman Zero style. I'm calling it here. You can mark it down. 2017, the 20th of January, 72 pin connector called the gritty reboot of Mario. (laughs) By EA. I'm okay with a gritty reboot of anything. Like, like you know those hyper realistic, well, hyper realistic you know I mean. paintings of Mario, you know, squashing the Goomba, and there's like blood yeah. and intestines squirting out everywhere. That's the Mario game I want to see. Not because I think it would be good; I think it would be absolutely horrible. But just because I want to see someone try to make that, it'd be a great novelty. See, actually, for sure. In- instead of being jumping on their head, he'd be using like a pipe wrench, <laughs> oh, and that would be like his primary well, weapon. It'd be. See, you can make this work. Got to type the the Unreal Engine. (laughs) Unreal Engine 7. Mario We're already halfway there, then. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So what else have you been playing, Tom, now that I've diverged Uh Mario? It's okay. I can tangent more about how come we don't see Junior used in any games anymore, right? We had Pac-Man Junior, Donkey Kong Junior. Whatever happened to Junior as a sequel? Nobody wants to play Junior. I want to play Junior. I'll be the Jerry Seinfeld of video games. What happened to Junior? What's up with that? <laughs> we but finally anyway. moved on to good characters. Anyway, um, I bought the most expensive VR game I ever have to date. Uh, I spent $40 on Serious Sam VR. Ooh, which how was that? So I, I looked at the trailers. Um, it's got, you know, a guy with a headset and he's holding, you know, big ass serious Sam guns and he's shooting everything. I'm thinking, OK, you stand in the middle of the room, serious Sam characters come at you and you shoot them. I'm thinking I'll play this for a half hour. I'll realize it's a stupid tech demo. I will throw it away. I will tell Steam to give me a refund. No harm, no foul. They're tr- trying something. Let them try it. It is still early access. So I broke my rule. I bought another early access game, which I seem to be doing more and more these days, especially when it comes to the Vive, because literally everything is early access. It has to um, be. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I load the game, and I'm standing, and there's like a temple in front of me. I'm like, so one of the enemies coming, right? I've got my guns. I'm ready. Nothing shows up. And then I realized, holy shit. Uh, Crow Team took Serious Sam 1, the HD re-release, and just added VR stuff to it. That's literally this game. It's the entirety of Serious Sam 1, the HD remaster, with mm-hmm. VR controls. It's really good. Nice. I, I did not expect this to be anywhere near even playable. I was expecting, you know, you're in the middle of a room shooting guys. I didn't realize it was a full game Mm -hmm. because the trailer is honestly probably underselling this game by a wide, wide margin. Uh, This is a full first person shooter. 
Yeah, I saw the trailer and it was just a guy running around dual fisting rocket launchers or having a rocket launcher and like a machine gun and just going to town. Though, I still hold that, man, that game looks a lot like fucking Turok. If Turok got an HD overhaul, it looks a lot like Turok. Mm-hmm. There's so how does the movement how does the movement work for VR? Uh, there's a lot of different options. Uh, I love Crow Team. I love their development style. They are rough around the edges, but they're straight to the point. They don't do any extraneous bullshit. So um, your VR movement is either the um, you know point and click to teleport, mm-hmm. um, or there's you can use so you've got the circle trackpad. You can tap you know, a little left to center and your guy will move a little left of where you're facing. Mm -hmm. Um, Or you can tap back and he'll move a little bit back or you can go fully back and tap that and he'll jump back. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, you can either do uh, instant teleportation uh, or sort of a quick shift, um, which I didn't notice any, um, any motion sickness with that. Or if you really want, you can use the touchpad as an analog stick and slide like you're in some sort of futuristic skiing wheelchair. Yeah. Slide along the ground like you're walking in a first person shooter. I was in Discord with Tom when he discovered this. Oh, wow. I thought I was going to hear this man puke. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> it was an interesting experience. Yeah. Um, so. After I, I told I told Irk, um, when if you imagine you're wearing skis and you crouch down when you're moving, it's not so bad, but it's still really bad. Yeah. Um, some people like that. Some people do not get motion sick when using that type of motion in VR. So I'm glad they have the option. For me, mm-hmm. I stuck with the touchpad teleport. Um, yeah. Pointing and teleporting, while there is that option, no matter what control scheme you use, uh, it's definitely a little too slow when things get yeah. hectic. So, um, the touchpad. Hmm? Serious Sam's kind of like an old school uh, shooter, right? So it's a lot of run and gun, not a lot of... Yeah, it's the best version of Doom before Doom 2016. Okay. That's why I was worried about the movement controls, because I know movement is always kind of weird in VR. Yeah, so yes. this the touchpad does let you circle strafe as long as you're you know turning to face the enemy, but it will let you circle strafe fairly effectively. It's not perfect, um, and it is a little cheap because sometimes enemies will fire at you and you'll just wait till the last second and jump out of the way, mm. and everything's fine. Right, no one can hit you. Um, but that's not to say that the game doesn't freak you the fuck out. I can only play about two to three levels at a time before I have to walk away and play something else or get something else into into the vibe. Um, Serious Sam will spawn enemies in front of you, behind you, in the sky, behind doors, through doors you've already opened, through doors you have yet to open, um, through doors on the other side of doors right when you're opening them. It will just spawn enemies everywhere because it hates you. And Serious Sam's only objective is to kill you as fast and as gruesomely as possible. VR actually makes Serious Sam easier. Uh, where in the normal Serious Sam, when stuff spawns in the sky in front of you and behind you, you had to you know shoot in front of you, quickly turn around and shoot behind you, shoot in front of you again because there's another guy there, aim towards the sky to try to take out the flying thing that's trying to kill you. But in VR, you can be like, oh shit, there's stuff everywhere. Pull out your machine guns and hold them physically at two different angles and start mowing the people in front of and behind you while looking at the sky creatures to see if it gets close enough to blast it with a shotgun. (laughs) It is an amazing VR experience. It is fantastic because it does make you feel like a badass when you mow down all these waves of enemies against all odds. Uh, A little scary, um, definitely hectic. Definitely uh, do not play this if you have a heart condition. I like it. I don't think it's worth forty dollars. I think it's worth thirty right now. It is early access. They are continuing to make updates. I can't say I don't recommend it. If you want a full shooter on the Vive, I'd say try it out. Worst case, spend the thirty bucks, play it for half or forty bucks, play it for a half hour, and then get out of it. Yeah, it's just, to me, that's a lot for a VR game. If I was to spend that kind of money right now on anything, it's going to be Planet Coaster. But here's the thing. It's a full VR game. It's a full VR game, right? It's not a tech demo. It's a full first-person shooter that happens to be in VR. 
No, see, here's where I think I disagree with you a little bit. I don't view this as a full VR game. I view this as a full game that has been added, that VR has been added to. This isn't a VR game. It doesn't feel like it, though. With a lot of games that try to tack VR on, it, it feels really janky. It doesn't feel like it belongs. Somehow, Crow Team has managed to make this game feel almost natural. It's not perfect. It's not something built for the Vive. Mm -hmm. Um, so for instance, one of the big issues is, uh, in the five steam knows where your head is, where you're pointing and they know what's left and right. So when you turn on your controllers, it goes, Oh, you're holding that in your left hand. It's a left hand controller. In some of the early five games, they just hard coded the controller to whichever one you turned on first was left. So serious Sam does have that problem of if you turn the wrong one on first, your hands are flipped. So you've got to, you know, undo your wrist straps and flip your controllers. It's not perfect by any means. Um, I think it's worth it. Uh, if I highly, if Crow Team, if you're listening, please, for the love of God, put out a demo. Just do the first level. Uh, tell tell people it's a, a it's a full game and get rid of that horrible, awful trailer. Um, this is the full Serious Sam game, the first one, and you can play it co-op and you can play multiplayer. It's literally, it's a whole first game with VR controls. Just feels really good. Still a high tech. Co-op Serious Sam. Co-op co Serious Sam. Yeah. I'll pass okay. on that personally. So uh, I did play more hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades, which was fantastic. There are some amazing guns in that game. Um, I have been playing a shit ton of chests. Um, again, the site is Lee Chess, so lichess.org. Totally free, totally open source. They've got a fantastic Android app. Um, I play at least two games a day with people. It's a ton of fun. And I've been getting pretty heavy into the chess scene. I'm having a good old time. <laughs> when um, you taking on the supercomputer? No, oh God, no. I can't beat the level one computer. <laughs> humans, <laughs> humans are easy. Humans make mistakes. Computers don't. Um, and and I'm, I'm really not that good at chess, but I'm, I'm yeah. better than the, the friend I've have, been playing pretty frequently. You don't have to be good at something to have fun with it. That's the yeah. beauty of it. It's, it's, it's like a good old time. Sex. <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually, um, when it comes to strategy games like Dota and chess, I realize that the entire game is positioning. It's unlocked this entire world of choices for me. As long as I'm in the right place at the right time, things will just work out for me. That's how I'm going to live my life. It's a Dota slash chess philosophy. Come <laughs> to my study. Buy my book. Making oh a cult. God. Okay, the so Dota the game I was playing... <laughs> Another cult. Yes. Uh, we the have game a habit I... of forming cults. <laughs> Sorry. How many, how many cults have we formed now? Like at three? Four? <laughs> at least a few. Um, I found out there's a chess variant, not on Lee Chess yet, there's a chess variant that doesn't take turns. It's a real-time strategy chess game. It's chess, but you just move everything when you can. It's called Kung Fu Chess. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. That sounds like a mess. It, it that sounds does, but it's awful. I would play it. Sounds, that. It sounds fun for like five minutes. Like to uh, I draw giggle my line maniacally with your friends, frantically trying to make all your moves. I, I want to play this. I'm going to find a website and play this. Um, you would never be able to play it in person. Yeah, that's true. He just I will just knock your other. king over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the nice magnetic weighted yeah. pieces. Um, so another game, uh, the game I've been playing this week is after running or running after watching awesome games done quick, I went back and decided, all right, it's time for me to get serious about super Metroid again. It's about that time. I have a couple of years. I'm like, yeah, super Metroid time. Uh, so I have put, five hours into that uh which doesn't sound like a long time in you know the modern era of 40 hour games but super metroid is probably a six hour game so i am i'm on the cusp of ending it it's so good from the music to the environments the enemies the bosses it gives me these video game moments that i haven't had in a very long time with the exception of dark souls because it actually feels a lot like dark souls 
um, where I'll go into a battle with full health and I'm, I'm ready to take this guy on and I'm at the proper, the, the proper area. I've got the proper outfit. I've got the proper weaponry. I can take this guy. And he beats me within an inch of my life. And I limp out of the boss room with 30 hit points left out of 700. What the fuck, Super Metroid? But I did it. I beat him. And then then you've got to limp all the way to the save room. And by the way, the save room does not heal you. It just lets you save. So then you have to find enemies to kill to heal yourself. Oh, it's those moments I live for. Uh, and then the the little jingle every time you get an item or a power up or ammo expansion. Oh, I love it. If you haven't played Super Metroid, please, for the love of God, for the love of gaming, go out, play it. I don't care. It could be ROMs. It could be virtual console. You could go out and buy a Super Nintendo. You just have to play Super Metroid. It is possibly one of the greatest games ever created. So you're ready for um, a sin? A great, great sin. I know you've never played Super Metroid. It's okay. We will heal you, my child. Come to the church of Super Metroid. I've never played a Metroid. Whoa! whoa, None at all. No Metroid games? Even I've played a Metroid game. I'm giving you a ROM of Metroid Fusion because that's the easiest one to get into and by far one of the best. That's the one I played. I love Metroid Fusion. It's so good. I played like five minutes of it on the GameCube when there was a display cube up at a GameStop. No, no, you you are missing like a a staple of gaming culture. There's a reason why there's a genre called Metroidvania. It's because Metroid coined the genre, Castlevania improved on it, then Metroid stole it back and made it even better. <laughs> and like, then this, I stuck to is, my games. This is like, yeah, this is a core of gaming. You have to play Metroid. I'm giving you a ROM of Metroid Fusion. You see, a but here's the thing: you have to remember of the one I own. <laughs> I don't like Castlevanias too much. I mean, I love the one for 64, but that was the bastard that no one liked because it was so different than all the rest of them. Did you just say you like Castlevania 64? Yes, I think We're that game got a bad rap. Podcast, podcast is over. Podcast is Man, done. That, ga- that game got a bad rap. <laughs> It ventured out and did something completely different from standard Castlevanias. I liked it. If they called it anything else, like shitty graphics, shit quest, and a shit castle with shit enemies <laughs> and a shit weapon, then it would have been a fine game because it had realistic expectations. But they called it Castlevania, right? You you can't put Super Mario 64's logo on top of Croc and expect people to react to it kindly. Yes, I did just make a rip on Croc. Well, yeah. was it actually a bad game or was it a bad yeah, game? It was, it was game. Okay. widely panned by, by critics, by fans, by okay. gamers, by everyone. It's, it was it's not just, a bad game. It was hated because it called itself Castlevania and it was so different than anything Castlevania's done. I'm, I'm going to the Metacritic right now. But, but I really, go to though, it all you want. Really, I think. We should force you to play Super Metro or Super Metroid. We should force you to play Metroid Fusion and get back to us next week on this very show. I can already tell you what I think. This game didn't age well. Everyone who still harps about it is soaked in nostalgia not, not Super instead Metroid. of actual. Not Super Metroid. Super Metroid has some rough spots. I will fully admit that. Metroid Fusion has aged like wine. Man. I'm used to dealing with fanboys. I'll go play their games, and then they'll realize that they're so soaked in nostalgia they can't see it for what it really is. Metroid Fusion has got tight controls, beautiful graphics. It's it's clearly one of the best Metroid games. Not not only that, but one of the best games of all time. And it's one of the few games I've beaten more than 15 times. I've gone through Metroid Fusion a total of 22 times. Wow. I have it on my Game Boy I can see it 22 times through that game, each time getting better, getting more stuff and getting faster at it because it's just that good. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So, so what what amazing great games have you been playing that aren't super Metroid or Metroid fusion? Well, the standard RL in and out with it. Um, 
did a little bit of disc jamming. Um, still in beta. They have their own net code they wrote and they brag on it. They really need to go to a standard net code. Um, there's some still some nasty stuff that happens with their um, online play where it yeah. shows you as catching it, but since you're not the host, you actually didn't catch it. And yeah, stuff I was like running that. into that a lot earlier when we were playing. So, I mean, it's early access. I'm sure that hopefully they get it figured out. I mean, the network shit's not easy. So give them some, I'm going to give them some time, see how it turns out. Um, I played Stanley Parable for the first time. I've had this game for five years and wow. finally played it for the first time. Now, is, did you have the Half-Life 2 mod or did you have like the, the Stanley Parable game? Stanley Parable. I'm pretty sure I've had it. Either way, I've had it for a stupid long time. Um, d gave it to me as a gift for either driving to Dayton or for buying him a Gatorade. I don't remember which. Either way, I got this game for some wow. stupid arbitrary thing that I did back in my past. That's um, a good deal. I will say I enjoy it. I really, really enjoy it. Um, nice. I like the fact that it imp- it wants you to keep going and keep redoing it and keep redoing it. And you'll, I've noticed like, I'm not looking up shit for this game. I don't want this game to me is beautiful because you don't look up how to get certain endings. You just kind of organically fall into them. It's that much more enjoyable. Like I'm noticing things when I replay it, I'm allowed, I can do this now. And then when I replay it again, it lets me do that to another step and I do it again. It lets me do it to another step. And then I accidentally go to an ending that forces me to close the game, and I lost all the progress on that meta. <laughs> and then I call it quits for the night. But um, so have you gotten it, the achievement? Achievement though? Um, I don't know. I was actually playing in my VR headset last night because I was lazy, and uh, achievements don't pop up in VR. Ah, uh, okay. And I was playing on Big Picture before that, and I don't remember seeing any achievements. But um, when I was playing, someone I was talking with checked out, and I did have some achievements that it didn't tell me about. So I have to check it. (laughs) But yes, um, it's a fun game. I really, really am late to it, but I enjoy it a lot. There's Um, there's a... um... Davey made a pretentious art game after the Stanley Parable um, that I really liked. I'm going to call it a pretentious art game because it is, but I really liked it because I like pretentious art games uh, called The Beginner's Guide. We should probably go through it as a group sometime. I have a feeling that one of us will like it. One of us won't care. (laughs) Wait, it's it's that way. I'm reversed on camera. Um, And then one of us will absolutely loathe it. (laughs) (laughs) You said pretentious art. I'm already on a disposition to not like it. Oh, it is It is such a pretentious uh, artsy-fartsy game, and I, I like, love every minute of it. But I love pretentious artsy-fartsy games. You might like it, but it literally has no gameplay. It is a walking simulator to end all walking simulators. Oh, Adam uh, hates it. Maybe. Right now, Adam hates it. <laughs> I don't hate all walking simulators. I love Boston simulators <laughs> from, so I, I played dear Esther for a group of my friends, which is mm-hmm. like one of the first original walking simulators. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm enthralled. Right. And I look behind me. I'm like, Oh my God, are you guys hearing the story? And they're asleep on the couch. I was like, <laughs> really? come on. So I finished playing it. And does, then I went through it three Esther more times. Does dear Esther hold up now? Uh, no, I, I own it I, and I never really went through it with the modern genre evolving in the way it has, you know, actually adding little hints of almost gameplay. Mm-hmm. Dear Esther is literally a walking simulator. Um, yeah. but to hear the full story, you have to play it five or six times and keep walking because so, each of the clips is randomized. So you might get something gotcha. that pertains to the story. You might not. It's interesting. I still think it's good, but it's not. It didn't age well. Of all the That's walking fair. simulators, the only one I'm really, really want to go and play is uh, Firewatch. Same. That's the one I haven't been interested in. Amazingly really? enough, yeah. it's got really good I've, reviews. I've heard fantastic things about it. Yeah. I I heard the the story just isn't doesn't match up. Like there's there's a lot of threads to things that. 
lead you down a path or like, oh, look, this crazy thing's going to happen. We promise it'll be nuts. And then you're like, oh, what was that crazy thing? Like, oh, it's just some kids in the woods. <laughs> oh, crazy <laughs> well, kids, right? You're like, oh. so one thing I, I, really I don't know like to... what I've read is true, but. So the guys you made that are really cool. They have the podcast title thumbs, but um, they were actually one of the indie devs that helped Frog Fractions 2 and actually hid information about Fraud Fractions 2 in their game. Oh. So, I mean, they had about, I think it was five or six different indie devs hide information about Frog Fractions in their game as part of the whole meta of figuring out Frog Fractions 2, which was really cool. Hmm. So, um, and then there was one other game I played I really, really want to get to. Um, I finally, I came in last week, not knowing a lot about it. Super hot. I come into this week, completely beating the game. Um, it is a really fucking good game. Really, really, really fucking good. I've been wanting to play this. Isn't it more of a strategy game than an action game? Um, I would say so. Yes, no. There is spots where... You have to go full go. You hmm. can't stop and turn because when you're not moving, time still passes. And when you take actions, time even goes really quick. Like if you take a shot, you, it's like a 0.5 second of continuous motion and then it'll hmm. slow down again. Or if you punch, it's that, that whole time you're punching, it's real time. Or if you're turning left to right, it speeds up a little bit. And it's it's really good. It it gets really uh difficult. Um, but I'm I really, really enjoyed it. Like you said, there is a lot of strategy to it, but there's just dead nuts action to it as well. And I love at the very end it shows exactly what you did in real time. Yes, that so was a cool you feel like such a badass because you're shooting this guy, shooting this guy, your clips out. So you throw your pistol at the next guy, pick up the gun. He drops, shoot the guy running at you with the sword, throw your gun at the machine gun guy, pick up the sword and then impale someone across the room with the sword. I mean, that kind (laughs) of stuff is just like, yes. Yeah. I'm glad Um, you said that it's really difficult because I think that, uh, that really helps a game like that. There's a few spots that I, there was one, particular elevator scenario that i was stuck on for probably Mm -hmm. 20 minutes once i got once i actually did it right in real time it took three or four seconds for that level so so was it more of a manner of figuring out what what you needed to do or knowing what you needed to do and actually having to pull it off both both. It took okay. me a good five minutes to figure out what I needed to do. It took me another 15 mm-hmm. to actually execute what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. That one was the point. hardest to execute. It was very technical. Mm-hmm. Um, but I unlocked the trial mode. So for all you guys interested, I'll probably be streaming some trials this weekend. So you can probably jump on the 72 PC Twitter or Twitch and uh, catch some of the videos of that, hopefully. But um, that so, has been all. Oh, sorry, tell me about the story of Super Hot because from I, I think I played the demo. There was some weird thing with breaking boundaries, or it's sort of breaking boundaries. You're supposed to do it and finding computers and fake typing into a DOS prompt, and it, it seemed a little hokey. The story is really cool. It's okay. Yes, it's it's. It's not like this groundbreaking, oh my God, moral story, but it's a fun story, uh, kind of develops and it just kind of twists and then a mind fuck. And then the very end of the game is just really cool. Um, I'm not going to say anything about it. It's a short game. It's like six hours to run through the campaign, do it. But um, there's a light story to it. It's kind of fun. Your, confu- your player's confused about it. Um. And as it keeps developing, it just, you start to understand a little more while you start to lose control, actually. So it's kind of cool. Okay. Really cool. But So at at the price they've got it now, is it worth it? Yay? Nay? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Um, I'm about to run through the trials, and I imagine the trials are going to just be, like it said, endless modes unlocked. And then there's all these different challenge trials and stuff. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I like the art style. Yeah. Yes, it is very interesting, and that's really useful. It really makes mm-hmm. those people pop out. If they didn't, yeah. that game would be so much fucking harder. Yeah. And less enjoyable, honestly. Okay, so that's what we've been playing. Um, there's been a little bit of news that's been dropping. Um, we'll kind of scream through that because none of it's too big. Um, Nintendo announces that Zelda Breath of the Wild will be the nail in the tombstone of the Nintendo Wii. It will, be, it will be the last title released for the Nintendo Wii. You. Wii U. Wii U. Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. <laughs> so March 3rd marks the last game to be published for the Nintendo Wii U. Shortest lifespan, or second shortest lifespan Nintendo's had in a console. Yeah. Only shorter is the Virtual Boy. <laughs> I, I can't feel bad for that. Um, also with the Zelda real quick is, um, the resolutions for the switch have been announced for the Zelda. It's supposed to be running 720 on tablet mode at 30 frames and 900 at 30 frames when docked. So upscaled mm-hmm. to 1080. So that was a little That's bit of a shocker. Cool. Yeah. It's odd. And also hearing that there are times that the frames will drop. So. Oh. It could be yeah. could be interesting. Hopefully, that's just rumors and people not quite right. understanding the hardware. But I've heard it first we'll IGN, and IGN has a really good hookup with Nintendo right now. So if they're mm-hmm. willing to say that kind of stuff, I'm kind yeah. of leaning towards it's probably true. Um, Gamespot released an article: top ten games of the year. Um, top two, or for this is for uh, most sales, pure volume of sales. Um, or what was it? Yeah, sorry. Number one yeah, this year is Call of Duty. Call of Duty, no biggie. Uh, Battlefield One was the second. <laughs> However, the third shocked me. I didn't realize it sold this well. Ubisoft's The Division comes in number three. Yeah, that's, I had no idea that game was that big. Like, I know it had a lot of hype before it came out, for sure. But I had a lot of hype. It was really, it was really good, and then it got completely yeah. fucked. Yeah, it had some major, major design issues um, because the the whole game basically revolves around multiplayer. But the devs made the the tr- tragic and the death knell to the game choice early on in their netcode to trust what the client was sending them. So. Mm-hmm. You modify what packets you're sending to the server, and all of a sudden, you know, you're the best guy, or you're invincible, or those bullets totally didn't hit you, I promise. Um, it just, it really, and without a substantial re-architecture, they couldn't fix it, so it died a quick and hackery death. Well, they've, they've made some good revisions on it since. They actually have a secondary game that shot off of it that everyone who's bought the Division has, the survival mode. So it's actually got a good resurgence going. Uh, okay. Four and five. No shocker sports games, NBA 2K17, Madden 17. Number six, six best selling game of this year. Should Grand not be Theft Auto 5. Grand Theft Auto Still 5. Fucking selling. How is it that That's low? impressive still? because of uh, GTA Online, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. That, I see a lot that of people playing that. Uh huh. That game has blossomed far and beyond what uh, Rockstar thought. That online is money a buddy of mine put it the best way i've ever heard he said gta online is less gta online and more second life 2 <laughs> and i can't argue with that it's um, the sims with bloody action i i put in you know some hours into gta online but oh my god the amount of content and grinding and hackers everywhere um <laughs> It's it's easily a game you can get sucked into. It is the yeah. best MMO you're not paying for. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we have Overwatch at seven. That does not count battle net sales. So pure digital battle net sales are not figured in here. What the fuck? Number seven without counting battle net sales? 
holy shit. Yes. That's I mean that's that good. it's your game of the year last year. That game yeah. that game was fucking hotcakes. Um eight, you have Call of Duty Black Ops three. Nine, FIFA seventeen shocks me. Really expected that to be a lot higher. FIFA yeah. sells globally. Yeah. For sure. And then ten, ten, ten was, is surprising. It only surprises me because of how late in the year it came out. Final yeah. Fantasy fifteen. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of anticipation because this game was announced a long time ago. And right. from all reviews, the game's actually pretty fucking good. Hmm. Um, I've there heard, was a I've story issue, games. but yeah, I, I heard, heard that the, it's a good game mechanically, but utterly devoid of meaningful content, um, either outside the main story or even inside the main story in some chapters. Hmm. See, I've heard the main story I, I, was good. I, I've heard the main story's good. Chapter 13 got fucked because they were something weird where you had to read a manga to understand what was going on in chapter 13, but they oh, later no. went back to patch it. Yeah. So the past couple of Final Fantasy games didn't go over very well, did they? So, so at least the this one would be kind of a step in yeah. the right direction, right? Lightning was basically uh, Angst Fest, Corridor Angst 13, the soap opera. Um, <laughs> I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I hated just about every minute of Final Fantasy 13. It was beautiful. Absolutely one of the most gorgeous games I've ever set eyes on, but I could not be bothered to play more than, God, I put 15 hours into that game, and that was 15 hours I'll never get back. Um, but 14 released, and 14 was the second online Final Fantasy, but when it first launched, it was a massive shit show, an absolute train wreck. So much so, Square said to everyone who bought the game, Hey, we're sorry. We're pulling this from shelves. The game is done. It's canceled. We're taking it back. And then they ended up launching V2 of the game called Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, because they literally rebuilt the game mostly mechanically from the ground up. And then they re-released it. Now, Realm Reborn has actually had some good success uh, with a bunch of really nice high-profile expansions and... Um, you know, maintaining their player base and keeping people interested, but it did have to take them a full game launch completely fucked to get to that point. 15 from play it. Yeah, 15 I heard it was a good, it was a solid launch no big issues on it, so I do plan on getting to it at some point it's just, god, it's a big game. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Steam I think Adam pointed out had their top grossing game figures up now. Yes, they do. Um, there's 12 games. They got them separated into tiers. So there's platinum, gold, silver. We're not going to go through all of them, but we'll go through the platinum games. Um, in no particular order, the top uh, sellers for in 2016 for Steam, we got Fallout 4, which is not very surprising. Um, Dark Souls 3. Also not very surprising. <laughs> no Man's Sky sold a lot. It's it's not surprising because it's, it's not off surprising. the it, it's gross numbers. People got burned. Yeah. yeah. The 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 top selling worst game. The worst top selling <laughs> game. Uh Rocket League, which I'm always happy to see. <laughs> uh Civilization, of course. Uh Grand Theft Auto 5, of course. Uh, CSGO, everybody and their mom owns CSGO. It's going to keep selling. Yeah. And, uh, side note real quick. <laughs> yeah. This this is grossing. This is not just game sales. Yeah. yeah this yeah, is this important is revenue. for the next game, I think, yeah, that's on yeah, the list. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, my list is different than yours because it scrambles oh. when you refresh the page. <laughs> uh, Total oh, War, Warhammer. I don't know. I've never played a Warhammer. Anything. Yeah. I've never I don't know played anything Total about War. these games. Total War always gets on these big lists of giant selling PC games because Total War games tend to be very, very, very good and very well built, very well detailed, very well architected. Mm -hmm. Everything about them is just crafted with love and care. But I don't RTS too often, so I've never yeah. had a real interest. I That's love fair. RTSs. I've just never done one of these. You yeah, might same. like Total War. I it, it always gets talked about in these game dev videos that I, I watch. Uh, moving on, the division, of course. 
made the other lists. XCOM 2, which I've heard is awesome. I've heard the XCOM games are great. The first one is amazing. I have not played it either. I recommend the first, the first one, one for cheap. sure. Mm-hmm. Super cheap. I heard, first one. I heard the second one's not bad. That mechanically is very good and stuff, but the story's kind of lacking on the second one. I've heard something on that line. I've heard. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the Witcher Three: Wild Hunt and yeah. Dota Two: The Free Game, <laughs> which by made the way, one hundred gross revenue. <laughs> what the hell, Valve? Uh, well, only you know, Valve, only so what, Valve could put yeah, out a free-to-play game and have it make their top-grossing games platinum list. Right. And, and let's put it this way: it's not just Dota Two. If you go down to the gold, I know we don't want to diverge too much. TF Two also free to play in the gold yeah. tier of gross revenue. That's incredible, especially as long as it's been out. I mean, so, it's going on ten Valve years. Hired, Orange box. Valve yeah. hired economists. They hired a team of economists to run <laughs> their free to play games. Of course, right. this would happen. Of course. Um, what is what all there is to spend money on in Dota Two? Is it just uh, like cosmetic hats. skins? Hats. It's hats. purely purely so, cosmetic. Well, so there's there's a little bit more than that. And nothing mm-hmm. at all that affects gameplay. Yeah, um, yeah. But there's the usual, I'm going to get a cool looking sword from my guy or a cool hat or a cool robe. Um, there's also the stuff like announcer pack. So if you want your, you know, Dyer's top tower is under attack. If you want that to be Rick and Morty, you can buy the Rick and Morty announcer pack for like five, ten bucks. That's a really cool idea. I, you can I highly buy the recommend Rick and Morty it because that announcer pack is awesome. <laughs> Rick and Morty pack oh, is wow. amazing. Oh wow, bottom tower is looking great. Morty, bottom tower is on attack. Oh god, it's great. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so so pick that up. Uh, you can also get like interface skins, which are less useful now than they were in the old, old Dota. Um, and the thing that I guaranteed propelled this to the top of the list, or propelled it to the platinum Dependium. list. Compendiums. So if you want to buy, you know, the $10 compendium is the foot in the door version, or you can get the like elite version for 50, 60 bucks. Um, like half, it, it depends on the year, but a large portion of your purchase price goes directly to the prize pool for the tournament. Nice. With that, you get cards, you get unlockables, you get um, a thing that you can level up. You've got a cool badge by your profile while the tournament's going on. Uh, you get a whole lot of cool in-game stuff by having a compendium, and you get to follow along with your favorite teams, making predictions. It's basically the the best sports handbook that you get when you walk into the stadium being a, a season ticket and holder. There's some really cool stuff they do to compendiums to make you play. Like You level up the more you play, the more you do. You level up your compendium. The higher it gets, the more items it gives you. It's a really quick rundown on how that works. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I guarantee that's, that's why. How much money have you guys spent on Dota 2? I've probably spent $150, $200. I would say $200 to $300. Nice. I I, and that's mostly the compendium, because I buy a compendium, and then we get close to the tournament. I'm like, ah, they're so close to reaching above that, you know, not a not million dollars, but to get to the next million I'll just I'll just throw in another thirty to buy levels for yeah. my compendium. Or I yeah, really me really want the, the skin. So so give me like ten levels. So they do something really well. They show you what's up the next big item up on your leveling system. So when you're within twenty levels, or well, when you're within fifty levels, you can put twenty dollars down and you get those fifty levels right now. Yeah. So they do that kind of stuff to coax you at the end. So at the very end, when you're really close, you're like, hey, compendium's over in two days, right? Here's your next big item. Yeah, and they so say, they hey, really you, coax can't, you. you can't buy this afterwards. This is a compendium-only thing. So if you want it, buy it now. That's entirely why I spent like 100 bucks or, or something, like 75 bucks on the compendium last year, is because I just wanted the damn map skin. It literally does nothing except make the map a little bit prettier, but I wanted it. <laughs> so I threw a bunch of money into the tournament, and nice. luckily it was a great tournament, and the team who deserved it got pieces of my money. <laughs> nice. Everyone got pieces of your money. 
All right. So that's the top grossing games this year. Uh, there's still some really light quick news. Uh, Halo Wars 2 open beta started now. Um, you can go p- get some information. Uh, it's free to sign up, free to try. If you're at all interested, I recommend it. Try to do it on the Xbox, though. This RTS is made for consoles. It'll play on PC, but it is made for consoles. So It'll I'm, feel I'm a little about, underwhelming. Yeah, I'm reading about this. I guess they did an open beta in June. And this one is a different game mode called Blitz. It's card based. Hmm. So you, you build kinda... a deck, you build a deck, and then deploy units in an attempt to capture and hold control points to score points. Hearthstone so Hearthstone meets RTS. RTS. Uh, That's actually kind of cool. I it like could that. be cool. It could be very cool. I could see it being a money grab. It because could also we'll, potentially end up being a money grab. So, so let me let me tell you what the best card in Hearthstone is. You ready? Oh, you ready? No. The oh, best no. card in Hearthstone that you can you can use is the one found in this your wallet. <laughs> if you pull out that card in Hearthstone, you will be one hundred percent unbeatable. I guarantee it. Oh no! The game's not that broken, but it's still pretty broken. That's sad because doesn't that have a a decent competitive scene? Um, I when you get to the competitive scene, probably buying for shit doesn't they work probably as much have anymore. Bands for certain yeah. cards and stuff, wouldn't they? Doesn't magic do that? You... I don't know. I the, I'm not sure I, the I don't want to. I don't want to knock Hearthstone because it's it's great, and honestly, it's one of the few real games, big games, you can put on your phone and play today without any money down. That said, it's still a little janky when you get wrecked by some guy that you know just put a bunch of money down on, on you know, opening up packs and getting foil cards and rare stuff and yeah, yeah. Um. So in other news, uh, we do have. We have a here. sorry, I was muted there. Um, oh, I was wondering why you got quiet. We uh, have some switch news. Um, no streaming services at launch for the console. No YouTube, no Hulu, no Netflix. That's I don't really find painful. it that bad. That's unfortunate I because don't. of the mobile tablet aspect of it. Yeah. But, but view, view it this way you're not going to be able to watch it on the go anyway. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah you don't have Wi Fi, you don't have network. But but you do. You've always got a phone, and you can tether that, and it just works, no, right? That's no, no, the world no, no, no. we live in. Tom, you have a phone. Use your fucking phone. I don't want to. I don't want to watch Netflix on a stupid teeny phone screen. I want to pull out my big ass Switch and be like Netflix. Yeah, but, but if you put the phone close to your face, then it is a big ass screen anyway. Yes, yes. Right. I'm going That's to. How it I'm works. Gonna, just strap Google, it to your face. I'm going to put this in my Google Daydream cardboard Oculus VR yeah. Rift. Five yeah. and, and it'll work perfectly. <laughs> uh, okay, Trademarking so, that um, name. If you use it, you owe me a nickel. EA announces they will be having their own um, fan service event, pretty much, kind of like the PSX stuff. Um, it's going to be June 10th through 12th, roughly three to four months. I think it's three months after the release of Andromeda. So possibly expect some Andromeda DLC rumored that there might be a Dragon Age 4 announcement there. So nothing huge, but definitely keep an ear open. I like these because I think E3 is way too big to manage for any normal human. Having these smaller events run by the companies themselves keeps things focused. Yeah, for sure. I like E I like E3 for Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo make announcements. Everyone else do it at the little things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Res 7, when it comes to Microsoft anyway, is going to be a Play Anywhere game. This is the first third-party Play Anywhere. So you can buy it in the Microsoft Store, play it on your Xbox or your PC. So Let's... Res 7, you mean Resident Evil 7, correct? Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Our, our notes they say... They didn't suddenly R-E-S. make five more Res Infinite games. <laughs> Oh my god, I would love it. I was like, wait, you said Res, and I looked at the notes. Oh, oh, Resident Evil. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not Res. 
because oh my god, if Res Seven was coming out, I would have to buy an Xbox <laughs> or, or or find something on the Microsoft Store because I need Res Seven. I don't even know what it's yeah. about, but I need it. I'm really happy so I, to see them doing this, though. I think yeah. as as close um, as more the consoles become basically PCs anyway. It's it's nice to see people have that flexibility. And Microsoft's been going for this unified front for a while. It's nice to see them actually mm-hmm. start hammering it in. And it's right. really nice to see third parties getting on board. I thought they yes. would be the ones dragging their damn feet. Yeah, agreed. And in a big game too, right? This isn't nothing. This is Resident right. Evil yeah. Seven. Exactly. Very so now, if you look, they're playing anywhere. Right now, you have Gears of War Four, big game. You have Forza Horizon, big game. You got um, I'm just playing Dead Rising Four, uh, kind of big game. And now you got Res Se- Resident Evil Seven. So that's it's catching on. Hopefully, it'll stick. I can't wait to play Resident Evil Seven. I might actually pay full price to play it. <laughs> I'm going to wait for the reviews, but I, I might be yeah. with you. I've heard good things so far. So, And then, Tom, I think you have an update on the total amount for Awesome Games Done Quick event that just concluded, right? Yes. So Awesome Games Done Quick came to its conclusion over the weekend, um, and they raised for the Prevent Cancer Foundation a total, a total of $2 million Two hundred and twenty-two thousand nine hundred and thirty-four dollars and fifty-two cents. So a nice. metric fuck ton of money <laughs> going to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Uh, it was great this year. There was some awesome stuff. Uh, Taskbot, the tool-assisted speedrun bot, which is basically um, hooking controller ports uh, up to a programmable interface and sending stuff across that was amazing. So they programmed a Super Nintendo to uh, use... And I just blank on the game they used. They used a classic game. I want to say uh, Link to the Past. Um, they used a loading screen glitch where they're able to dump assembly code translated through controllers into the game to build their own programs. They built a video player and showed a speed run of Mario 64 and a speed run of portal running in a video on a video player on a super Nintendo that was being fed the video by button presses from a controller port. That's how they, they sent the bits across. Um, absolutely insane. And then, then to top that off, they built, they sent across and built a, um, a, a streaming video client where they had live video going back and forth from some guy with the camera to the Super Nintendo. Absolutely insane. <laughs> so check out the Taskbot stuff. The last day they've got it on YouTube. Um, absolutely incredible. But yeah. hey. $2.2 million raised for charity. They also hit, they broke their, their speed record. They broke their world run speed run record for the fastest uh, AG or the fastest uh, games done quick event to reach $1 million, which nice. was just fantastic. Yeah. The, the whole video game streaming community is really, really fucking growing. And I think that shows it. They've managed to raise $2 million just by showing people speed runs. I mean, really, that's all it is. They sped run games and people gave them two million fucking dollars to donate. Granted, to a good cause, but it's still a lot yeah. of money coming in just for speed runs. That's really cool. Speed runs are really interesting, though. They can be really fun to watch. I, I'm definitely planning on checking out the, some of the footage from that since I didn't watch it uh, during the event. The Halo 2 run is amazing. Check that out. It's got great commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely worth it. It was really the interesting amount. hearing them. Yeah, they were the hearing them talking about the community recognizes that this weird thing can happen. We don't know how to use it yet, but this our entire Halo Two speedrunning community is trying to figure out how we can exploit this to get past this kill boundary and stuff like that's just really fucking cool. So you'd think, you know, hey, it's Halo Two. It's been out forever, right? They've probably figured out literally everything on how to speedrun it. Uh, they were using strats er, strategies that were discovered, no shit, last month. 
they were discovering a new strategy to speed up their run of Halo 2. These games are in a constant state of, of being better perfected. And it, it even gets better. It's until you fully break a game like Super Mario World Now uh, or Link to the Past, which has been broken for a long time. I speed ran that in five minutes. Literally, you can get to a credit screen in five minutes. I should do a stream on that. It's really cool. And it's easy to do. You can do it at home. Um, but... Yeah, uh, check that out. Uh, tonight, we were going to talk about open world games, some of the pitfalls we've seen, some of the things we like, but we're running a bit late because I rant too much. Uh, so we are <laughs> going to push that to next week. But I want you, I'm putting this out to the community, tell us about your experience with open world games. I want information. I want stuff you love, stuff you hate, games we might not have heard of that are open world, especially weird shit. Uh, email, Twitter, you see the stuff in, in the, the area down here on the bars. Uh, it'll also be announced at the end of the podcast. So please, we need your, your input uh, for discussion purposes. Um, with that, we do have a random gaming fact to get to. We do. Yes, we do. Um, yeah, so that's fun. Um, <laughs> I think Tom's a liar and we'll actually get you with that next week with oh. the um, open world stuff as well. Um, so actually I this thought, is the conclusion of the cast. I, I thought, I thought your, your gaming fact was um, tomorrow, but in 1999 is uh, the original release for super smash brothers. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about that. Good call. Yeah. There, there was that. There was that. That small gaming fact. <laughs> so uh, yes. in 1999, Smooth. January 21st, started the birth of one of the best fighting game series of all times, and by far one of Nintendo's greatest franchises. So uh, well, celebrate and play some Melee. The union of all the franchises. Yes. <laughs> so that's all we got for you this week. So um, with all the open world conversation, we would love to hear from you. You can tweet at us at, at 72 PC Podcast. You can send us an email at fanmail at 72 pinconnector.com. You could always check out some of our old videos or things over at our YouTube at 72 Pin Connector. Or you could always go to our website, see what we're up to at 72 pinconnector.com. And that's all for us this week. So until next week, game on. Game on. See you guys.